There ain't enough boots in this town for the both of us. Now drop your sneakers and don't let me see you in these parts again, partner. There's a new sheriff in town, and Felix is not messing around. This ooze rogue is a 5 mana 5 4 with menace and ward 2. Boo! Fuck ward! All my homies hate ward! Boo! And he is a combat damage amonicon. Meaning, whenever an ability triggers, when we deal combat damage, we are going to get two of those triggers. This is a pretty unique play space for Sultai to play in. We are going to want to run a lot of small evasive creatures that generate us value. Malcolm is a great example. If we drop him on turn 2, attack turn 3, get 1 counter, attack turn 4, get 2 counters, turn 5, we drop Felix, attack with Malcolm, we get two triggers, so we'll loot off the first one, three counters. Fourth trigger right there, that's four counters. We're going to get to cheat something into play right there on turn five. That's super powerful after looting every turn. So we can sculpt exactly what we want to cheat in. And then from there on out, we're going to be cheating in two things into play every turn. That's pretty busted. O'Hare Castle is an absolute powerhouse. Going six cards deep to find a creature and a land twice every combat is just insane value. Being a rogue is also a very valuable creature type for Felix. There are lots of cheap evasive rogues that we can drop before Felix to generate value, and we can even play cards like Anawan the Ruin Thief, which will double trigger for each rogue that hits our, op our opponents, drawing us tons of cards. This is not a dedicated rogue type deck, but it does have quite a few rogue synergies. Felix also provides us a unique build opportunity to use the powerful Cypher cards. Cypher is a neat ability found in some instants and sorceries that allow us to exile the spell under one of our creatures on resolution. Then, the next time that creature, well, every next time the creature, hits a player, we're going to get to cast a copy of the Ciphered spell. Felix will cause that Cypher trigger to trigger twice, allowing us to double cast the exiled spell. Cards like Hidden Strings allow us to untap 4 lands whenever we hit someone, essentially ramping us for a second main phase. Hands of Binding can repeatedly lock down 2 of our opponent's creatures each turn, which is honestly an underrated form of interaction, especially when we are trying to get in for damage. Call of the Nightwing can create 2 1-1 flyers each combat. Stolen Identity can copy 2 of any one of our opponent's creatures or artifacts, or ours. That's the nice one ring you got there. Mind if I have one too? Felix is just full of flavor and capable of utilizing some pretty unique cards in a very powerful way. So if this looks like a fun brew to you, stick around and please like, comment your favorite Thunder Junction Commander down below, and subscribe for the spiciest deck content on the internet. Now, Sultai is not the best color at attacking. There are some things that these colors really lack when it comes to powerful combat-based strategies. Namely, we lack haste. Haste is probably the number one most important keyword in Commander for combat-based strategies. Think about it. In 1v1, yeah, haste is great of course, but it's three times as valuable in Commander. In 1v1, haste gets you value one turn faster. In Commander, if you don't have haste on your creature that wants to attack to generate value, you have to wait three turns before that card is doing anything for you. That's three turns where you might be board wiped, your creature killed in some other way. So haste was definitely an issue I needed to tackle, and outside of red, our options are pretty limited. We have both pairs of greaves. Of course, and yeah, the protection is nice, but honestly, the haste is way more important in this deck. Our commander already has ward 2. Ooh, fuck ward. All my homies hate ward. Boo. And most of our creatures are small, evasive creatures that are not much of a threat on their own. So the haste is definitely the most valuable part of these cards. I am also including the new Lava Spur Boots for the same reason, and Crashing Drawbridge which can give our whole board haste, which is quite difficult in Sultai. Honestly, if this guy was in red and we had access to good haste enabling, double strike, and extra combats, oh boy, that would have been a spicy meatball. But, oh well, I still love Felix, I think he's really cool, and it's probably better if he doesn't have access to all those tools.
Extra turn spells can fill in for those extra combats that we lack, and I did include Notorious Throng, which is just both very flavorful and a very good win con for our deck, but I don't like including too many extra turns, I just don't like taking up too much of the time in a four player game, I like everyone to be able to play, but if your playgroup enjoys playing with a lot of extra turns, that would definitely be a great way to power up this deck. Edric effects are going to be amazing for us though. We of course have Edric, we got Gix, we got Toski, we got the new Gaunti, and we got Marcus, which will buff our whole board on the first trigger and then draw us a card from each subsequent trigger. So very good synergy with Felix. I also included the new Vraska Joins Up, which will both give all of our creatures death touch permanently, which makes them much harder to block effectively, and provides us with card draw when our legends hit our opponents, and we do have a decent number of cheap evasive legends. And for only 2 mana, I thought this card was worth testing out. I also want to mention Mighty Servant of Liuk O, which we can crew with our commander and one other creature the turn we play Felix, and immediately attack with a 6-6 Trampler that is going to draw us 4 cards when we deal combat damage. Yeah, that is some crazy value for a 3-drop. With Felix doubling up these triggers and the large number of evasive creatures and token generation we have, we can easily get to a point where we are drawing 10 to 20 cards a turn in this deck. In order to accomplish this, we need to be able to go wide. We of course have a bunch of just cheap evasive creatures, but we also have a good number of token makers. Pest Infestation is just a great mass artifact and enchantment removal spell while also generating us a horde of pests. Feywild Visitor can generate us up to 6 evasive flyers per turn. Scepter of Celebration will give us some needed evasion and generate us a huge amount of tokens. Throwing this on our commander is probably going to generate you like 14 bodies per turn unless they want to double block your 7 power trampling commander, which I really don't think they want to. I already mentioned Torius Throng and Call of the Nightwing. Orochi Soul Reaver is mostly here for the treasure production, but manifesting 6 of our opponent's cards each combat is not too shabby in terms of flooding the board. Tyranid Haridan is a card that really wants haste, but if you can haste this thing out with your commander already in play, the token generation is going to get out of hand fast. The first swing you'll make two one ones, but the turn after that you'll make 6, then 18, and then 54. Yeah, if uh, you get to that point, you're winning that game. If we're going wide, then we should have ways to buff up our board. Drana and Kazur put in tons of work, growing all our creatures by plus 2 plus 2 each turn. Drana with first strike is especially lethal, since she will trigger before the rest of our creatures deal combat damage. Kazur also comes with an Ukima to your hand for free, which is just great value. I also really uh, have been enjoying this Conclave Sledge Captain card. It's really fun. It isn't necessarily good at pumping tokens, but if we throw one of those backup commanders or backup counters on our commander, now he's a 6-5 menace trample and when he deals combat damage to someone, he's going to get that many counters on him twice. Yeah, that's going to be crazy. You're going to hit someone once and he's going to get 12 plus 1 plus 1 counters. That is messed up. He's going to turn into a lethal threat really fast. Next, let's get into some ramp to make sure that we're able to deploy all these sweet cards we're going to be drawing in a timely fashion. We are not going to be using the usual green ramp suite you would normally see. Ramping into Felix early is just not that useful if we don't have damage triggers to double yet, so I found it to be a much, uh, much more consistent game plan to just try to curve out with evasive value creatures in the first four turns, Drop Felix just on curve on turn 5 and generate immediate value right then with the creatures we've been playing before that. We have Birds of Paradise because it can hold equipment and attack really well being a flyer, so I did include that one. Then we have a bunch of creatures that make us treasure when we hit our opponents. These are going to generate us tons of mana. Grim Hireling alone can generate us 12 treasures per turn if we hit all three of our opponents with Felix in play. We're going to be able to cast those 10 and 20 cards we're drawing every turn. <laughs> it's going to be nuts. We also have Sword of Hearth and Home, which will ramp us two basics into play untapped each time we hit, as well as Flicker Something, which is rarely relevant for this list, I admit, but may give us some small bonuses here and there. We also have the new Sword of Wealth and Power. I really like this one here. It's giving us some strong protection and ramp options. 
generating us two treasure per turn with Felix in play, but also, as well as with this other card, one of our base of rogues, Mercurial Spell Dancer, these have some really cool interactions with our cipher cards. So these are going to allow us to copy the next uh, instant or sorcery cast when we deal damage. And so if we can stack the triggers so that our sword or spell dancer triggers resolve first, and then we resolve our cipher triggers, we're going to be getting additional copies from those cipher triggers. Since cipher is worded that we actually copy the card and then cast the card, they will trigger those uh, you know, next time you cast an instant or sorcery copy it type thing. So we can end up getting 4x value from our cipher spells with these cards in play, which I just think is really neat, and you can't really do that in any other deck. So I wanted to include it for sure. Having a rogue sem theme means we are going to be milling our opponents a little bit. So I made sure to include some answers for those graveyard strategies so we aren't fooling them too much. I included Nautiloid Ship as a way to steal their creatures. We exile their whole graveyard, and then when we hit someone with the ship, we're going to get to put in two of their creatures from their graveyard into play. That's pretty dope. And uh, Dothy Voidwalker as another evasive rogue. That's also graveyard hate. Uh, and finally, I have Arcane Heist to steal some juicy instants and sorceries. To round out the list, we have a bit of recursion, a bit more protection and interaction. Hope you guys enjoyed the deck tech. I had a blast with this one, delving into this super unique strategy in Sultai Color Pie. Felix is super dope. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace! <laughs>